Hello, friends, and welcome back to r slash pro revenge. Today, we have three cool stories for you, starting with a short one about a strange landlord and continuing with the story in which a Porsche owner was left without tires and paid fine. But before we begin, don't forget to subscribe to our channel if you're new here and turn on notifications so you don't miss a new video every single day. Here we go. Pay rent on time? No problem. Back in 2014, I was renting a small studio apartment from a private renter. I made decent money as a shift supervisor for a cosmetic tattooing salon and got into the habit of paying my landlord about three to four days early because of when my paydays fell. So even though in my rental contract it stated that rent is due by 5 p.m. on the 1st, I generally paid on the last payday of the month so that I didn't have to worry about it. So after about a year, I ended up switching banks. Because of this, they put a 24-hour hold on my first paycheck. My company was not big enough for direct deposit, so I just shot a quick text to my landlord saying that I'd be paying on time instead of early this month. Again, since the rental contract stated that rent was due by the 1st by 5 p.m., I really didn't see this as being an issue. I was wrong. My landlord proceeded to send me a scathing text that basically said if I didn't pay on time that I would be evicted immediately and calling me all sorts of nasty things. Needless to say, I was PO'd. I never said I would be late, had never been late, just wouldn't be dropping it off early. So from that day forward, I always paid at 4.55 p.m. Yes, I would wait right outside his door in my car until a few minutes before 5 on the 1st. I also started looking for a new place to rent and ended up upgrading to a small one bedroom about six months later. And our second story. Entitled Lady's Porsche Loses Tires. Okay, so this story took place back when I was in Florida in the early 1990s. South Florida was devastated by Hurricane Andrew. My dad, as part of a local charity, was set up day after day at a local market seeking donations from shoppers to give to food banks. You have to understand this storm left many people homeless and without power in some cases for six plus months in Florida heat and humidity. My father was legally disabled from a serious car accident. He was hit by a drunk driver in the early 80s and suffered from relentless hip and back problems. It never killed his heart or kindness to others, hence the charity work. One day he was about to pull into the disabled space at the local market to go buy a few items to donate to the hurricane charity. Right before he's about to pull in, this lady pulls into the space in this shiny red Porsche. My dad parks behind her and says, excuse me, ma'am, I was about to pull in there, and also points to his disabled placard in the window. She says to him, you don't look disabled, and proceeded to walk into the store. For anyone who has a relative who uses a disabled space, you know the frustration of this situation and the anger one feels. My dad, seemingly unfazed, waits until she goes into the store, then gets out and snips the valve stems on all four tires, flattening, but not destroying, all of them. He then pulls into another space not far away and just waits. About 15 minutes later, the lady comes out and is shrieking about her car being vandalized. My dad's far enough away so she can't see him, but he can hear everything. She calls the police. Big mistake. She files a report for vandalism and the police give her a ticket for being parked in the disabled space with no placard, about $250 at the time. The cops leave and she calls a tow truck. As the car's being loaded onto the truck, my dad pulls up and says to her, you don't look disabled, but your car sure is, and then drives off. My dad could be a nice guy and pure savage when he needed to be. And our last story. I ruined the firm I used to work for after they committed fraud and fired me because of it. I was a clerical assistant for a firm in my city. The firm was a small one of nine employees that also had clerks who would intern from time to time. I worked there part-time during my junior and senior year, then full-time after I graduated. I made it about four months after before I was told to resign. This was my first ever business formal job as we had lots of client face-to-face. -face. The clients were big fire department, police department, etc. I was brought on by work study from my uni and at first really enjoyed working for the firm. I had an amazing mentor that taught me all there is to know about this side of the business. He pretty much kept the firm running and put in so much effort that when he interviewed me, I thought he was the owner of the firm and not just the staff member above me. 
Anyways, as this was my first job, I wasn't keen on office politics or good at recognizing my surroundings with peers. After I started working full-time, I began to catch on and see what was going on behind the scenes. The partners of the firm were scumbags. They treated all the staff like monkeys and showed no appreciation. They were both male and constantly harassed the female staff and interns, so often that the turnover rate was so high that there were new interns every few weeks. There were cliques inside of the firm. The attorneys banded together with the office manager and HR manager. The interns stuck together, and I was with my mentor. For the most part, we were able to stick together and get our work done and turn out good work product, but it was hard to watch the harassment of the interns, the social gossip circles of the cliques, and blatant disregard for the staff. Soon after, an intern complained to HR that one of the partners slapped her butt and called her vulgar names. The HR manager, attorneys, and office manager gaslighted this poor intern so bad that she was an emotional wreck when she just walked out and quit. That was the point my mentor and I had enough. After seeing this, we started to take pictures, notes, and gather statements of everything we could see that was going on inside the firm that was illegal. After a huge firm event that involved many hours of overtime, close quarters, and pressure, a breaking point was hit, and the staff was exploded upon by the attorneys and managers. After the event, all the employees went out to the local club to relax and throw back a few drinks to cool off. This was not something you would think people in this field would do, especially when the average age of the employees in the firm was over 45. After the attorney started getting crappy drunk, the interns and my mentor took off to go home for the night. I stayed but went to party with my friend group that was also out for the night at the same club. I bounced back a few times between groups and dancing, but near the end of the night I came back to check on my co-workers and what I saw was shocking. They rented out a VIP stage and had bottle service all night. When I walked up to the stage, I saw the two partners grinding on associate attorneys, fondling them, and taking turns making out with them. I was disgusted and started to hatch my plan. Not only is that a conflict of interest in my state slash type of law, but both partners were married with kids, and so were three out of the four other female attorneys and staff. I got one of the promoters that was my roommate at the time to get the club rep to take photos of them doing this, but also send them to me. I snapped a few on my phone and left the club. Before we went out, we all stopped at a hotel room close by that was rented out by the partners of the firm. I went back after I left the club, and since I was an employee of the firm, I was able to convince the front desk to let me back into the room as I was there a few hours earlier and was working with them to pick up and drop things off for the event. After I was let in, I started to take pictures of everything that I could find. I emptied drawers, bags, and closets and was able to take pictures of many, many weird pills and things like IDs that were left behind earlier. The following Monday, I go into the HR office and tell the manager that I was uncomfortable with what I saw the partners doing, what they have done in the office, and how everyone exploding on me and my mentor at the event was unacceptable. Immediately after I left the HR office, the manager ran into the partner's offices and closed the door. I could hear screaming coming through the door and booked it over to my mentor's office to fill him in. After I blurred out what happened and what kind of pictures I got, the partners and HR manager run into my mentor's office and overhear us talking about what happened the night before. They immediately tell us to resign and to pack our things as they were worried about our hostile work environment and what it's doing to the firm. I'm on the verge of tears and don't know what to do next. My mentor quietly asks for our termination letters, all of our pay stubs, all of our billable hour entries from when we started, and my university work-study paperwork. The HR manager was shocked by this but legally had to produce all of these things for us upon request. After two hours of data compiling, my mentor and I walked out with all of our things. We ended up going to a bar with all the paperwork we just got and started to plan our revenge. We compiled all of our timesheets, build hours, and all my work-study paperwork. Not only did I upload all the pictures to separate email accounts to send to the respective spouses of the attorneys, but we found out that the partners slash managers muddled with our billable hours to change them to a higher rate to bill our clients more, even though a clerical assistant and paralegal were drafting and filing pleadings. Through my work study, they reported that they were paying me $18 an hour total while paying me $6 an hour from their pockets, and my school was fronting the other $12 as a reimbursement. Not only on my pay stubs was my hourly rate $12, 
I nor the firm was being taxed for the other $6. Instead, it was being pocketed straight by the firm. After a complete and thorough compilation of documents, my mentor and I set out the next day to complain to the State Bar Association to show that the attorneys at the firm committed malpractice, misrepresentation of funds, harassment, and conflict of interest. Their spouses were emailed all of the photos of the night out clubbing and what was found in the hotel rooms. My university was informed of the misuse of funds. I applied for unemployment based on their false misconduct firings. After two weeks of job searching, my mentor and I got picked up at another firm as a package deal. We became close after, and we constantly see each other every other week. Months into working the new job did we decide to snoop on the old firm that we set out to destroy. Not only did four of the attorneys lose their legal license, they were sued by the Bar Association and L&I for fraud. Their spouses were all involved with divorce proceedings, and the manager's reputations were ruined by what was brought to light and what they covered up. My mentor and I ended up pulling all the superior court submissions to read over what documents were submitted in court, and they were caught lying in declarations they submitted. It felt real nice to be vindicated by ruining their relationships, jobs, and business. Hey guys, thank you all for watching the video. I'll see you in the next one.